I've been living off grid for a good six years now. I like the place. I mean, it's just amazing. And I mean, the view is unbelievable. Living off grid, there's just some chores that I got to do before doing regular things like shoveling the solar panels, for example, is one thing that you have to do when there's a snowstorm. Doing the road with the tractor and chop wood, do kindling, uh, you bring wood inside the cabin like maybe uh, two times a day, make sure that the water tank is full. You got to be organized. So just simple things like this, but you adjust over time. Since the beginning of my project, a lot of things change here. And each year I add stuff, I make it more comfortable. I've upgraded my solar setup. I've upgraded my rain catchment system. I've rebuilt my bathroom about three times. I've built a better shed for my wood, changed the design of the living room. I did like a small office and I've even added in a whole septic system. I had no skills. Eh? When I started this place, I literally bought like a saw, and then I was like, okay, I think I'm gonna need more tools. So I started to look at like YouTube video and I asked people how to build stuff and I even asked for help at some point on the process. The framing has been done with two of my friends with our professional framers. Of good living, you gotta be like curious. You gotta, you gotta like to work with your hands. People ask me sometimes, where do you get a land? Like, I would like to be off grid, but where is it possible to do it? Where do you like find a land, for example? Uh, here we're like in Canada, the land that I have right now, it's a residential lot. I'm 10 minutes away from a village. I can build a house on it like everyone else can around me. Uh, the only reason I'm off grid is because Hydro-Quebec was not like in the area. Hydro-Quebec is our grid this is the provider of electricity. Now it's getting closer and closer, but still we can choose if we want to be plugged on it or not. So when I started to build, I asked for a building permit and uh, I couldn't get it because it was no road. I started to build without even getting the permit because I was like, I'm going to build my driveway. After that, it's going to be fine. And then when the inspector came, he said like, okay, but then you have to do that and do this and do that. So to regulate my situation, at the end it cost more money because I had to build a regular septic system. The reason why I started it, because I had no money and I thought it would be cheaper, but in fact, it's quite more expensive. So the cost in order, the land I got it for $10,000. Now it's impossible. The land around me, they're for sale. It's over like 200,000 for one acre, which is like completely insane. And then when I build the cabin, it cost me $40,000 for the framing. And then I added stuff over years. So the project initially was like around 64,000. It's all in Canadian dollar. But that was like a very rustic and rudimentary cabin. So I added things and like, just the septic was over like 40 grand. So now I calculate with like the lithium batteries, the new solar and the big water shed, like the, just the plastic tank was $4,000. You, you can't dig a well for $4,000, but like, I mean, it's quite expensive. So let's say you add things, it goes quick. Now I calculate the project at around 175,000 Canadian dollars. We're two people living here, me and my girlfriend, and a cat. And uh, the cabin is small. I mean, like this is an 18 by 22 with the back shed. So if you calculate like the square footage, it's around 556 uh, square feet. It looks kind of bigger because like there's a two loft. There's like the main loft and then there's another loft where the bed is uh, located. I do work here sometimes while I'm editing. I have an office in my closet. On the main floor, you find the kitchen where you can have like a regular fridge uh, that works on the 120 volt. And then you got like a, this small propane cooked up, uh, which is like the same one than before. After that, you got like the wood stove, which is like the primary uh, heating uh, system. After that, you got like a small place for reading. You got the bathroom. I mean, it's small, but like everything is working well and uh, it's comfortable here. 
I mean, it, you don't need much bigger, I feel like. Uh, the NRG here is from the solar and a generator in case of backup when there's like long stretch with no sun. So we got full sun during the morning that faced the first solar array. And on top of the cliff, you got like a two other array that faced the sun for the rest of the day. So they work separately, but it's good because like it gives you more sun exposure for filling the batteries. The batteries are uh, the Voltium uh, batteries. It's a Quebec brand. It's a lithium, it's great. Before I had the acid battery, you can go just for 50%. Now it's like you can drain it, so you get way more out of the battery. It's just two batteries. I have approximately two days uh, without sun. After that, I gotta do like one hour of generator and then I'm good to go for another day, waiting for the sun. So we got like four months where you, you have to be more on the generator, but it's not that bad. For example, this winter I spent about $200 in gas for the generator. I never run out of water. We're very lucky to live in a place where there's frequent rain. Before I had like a 3000 liter cistern on my second floor. Now I got 6000 liter. With that you can run like all winter, no problem. We keep it in the shed at the back and this shed is heated with a system of vent. There's a fan that suck the air warm from the cabin in the shed and keep it from freezing. And the, the setup is very simple. The rain drip from the roof in a gutter. There's a filter in the gutter. Then like the main gutter drip into like um, some kind of funnel with like a screen door on it. So if there's a flash flood, it drips from the outside of the building instead of before the, the filter was inside. And like it got plugged and there was water everywhere. So I changed that. So basically all the catchment is outside the building. Um, after that, then like it's a regular 12 volt pump and you got like some other filter, a nylon filter for like the kitchen sink. For drinking it, we use the UV lamp. I worry about water, but I'm not a freak about it. I mean, sometimes I go picked up a tool in the shed and I just have a quick look at the tank and I'm like, oh, okay, it's not that bad. 6,000 liter of water, it's a lot of water but you still gotta be careful. So you gotta be careful. You take like maybe two, three shower a week and not long shower. During summertime, it's another story. I mean, like the tank is always full. So if you wanna have like a 10 minute shower, go ahead. If you wanna have a bath, take it. Winter times are different. We're approximately five months without rain. So if you calculate, it's a little bit more than 1000 liter per month. For the shower, yeah, I got two system here. I got the first system, it's a propane on demand, water heater, and I got like also a regular electric heater. And uh, like the sunny days during summer, then you start the electric heater, close the propane, so we have one propane there. I had a composting toilet, which I didn't really like the smells. There's a fan and like still, I feel like composting toilet smells like rabbit poop. And I hated it. So I was trying to find a solution uh, for not using all the, the water that regular toilet use. So I have an RV pedal toilet. So when you do a number one, no water required, which is amazing. You just flush it and buy. Number two, you add water with the pedal and it's around like one pint of water. So this is very minimum. And uh, all the stuff go in the septic and that's it. For laundry here, I do it in the village. There's a laundry mat, and sometimes I just go to friends. Simple as that. Living off grid, you be aware of the forecast. For just the sun, the weather, is it going to be cold? Is it going to be warm? All those things, like you're super aware of your environment. I basically do two fire per day, one in the morning, one at night, and then I have to wake up in the middle of the night to throw some more logs, but that's about it. Well, it depends how cold is the winter, but I use around six to seven face cord of wood during winter, and sometimes it's even less. So the material elevator, which I bring my wood with, um, I can't use it during winter. So for example, I get to bring wood up before like it starts freezing out there. 
There's also another thing is the, the solar passive. If it's a sunny day outside, the house faces south, so you get like directly heat from the sun. It's quite comfortable. People they're like, why don't you use like those Martin propane? It's direct vent, it's in the wall. But the thing is the propane. See? It's not like a cheap thing to buy. Now I use like uh, the barbecue propane tank to run the water heater and the smoke cooked up, so it's very minimum. But like if I start heating with that, it's gonna be expensive. So that's why I wanted to stay with the wood. Plus the wood here, it's everywhere. Because I work here, I need internet and it's uh, Starlink. It takes lots of power though. So when you use it, you plug it. And when you don't use it, you unplug it. Uh, what I do for a living, I'm a freelance filmmaker. Uh, having like the opportunity to uh, manage my schedule, uh, it's a great thing. You can go see my YouTube channel. I don't use it that much anymore, uh, but I was like showing what I do. But I still have an Instagram and then I use it more often. I show some small sneak peek about the life here. And I even made plans of this cabin because like people were asking me for it. I feel sometimes like I would like to have a good backup like Hydro Quebec just for the simple reason that this place can freeze during winter like if I go filming a project uh, I would like to keep the house warm at a certain level it's quite limiting to be off grid like I couldn't leave this place for one week the people have to come here uh, my neighbors for example shovel the panel for me and do like fire every day so just to avoid all that I would get plug on Hydro Quebec, but on the other end, I think it's cool to be completely off grid still, but it's limiting. So it depends what you want to do with your life. Subscribe to Exploring Alternatives and check out our playlists for more stories like this. You can also follow Canadian Castaway on YouTube and Instagram. Thanks for watching.